The initial reports were that uh, he was firing at a wall, but as cars would come by, he was actually pointing the rifle and handgun at the cars. Reports of a heavily armed man puts an elementary school on lockdown and an entire community in Albuquerque on edge. This morning, police have not found the man, so where is he and was the community really in any danger? We've been following that story all night and we'll bring you the very latest in this half hour. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to KRQ News 13 this morning. I'm Krista Gutierrez. Thank you so much for joining us on this Tuesday, December 2nd. Before we get back to our top story, we wanted to check on that forecast. It's warming up a little bit. Here's meteorologist Cassandra Crimmy. Yeah, Crystal, yesterday, eastern locations had a huge drop in temperatures through our morning hours. We were looking at 30, 40 degrees of a chill down yesterday. This morning, we're starting to bring those numbers right back up. Right now, we are looking at 10 to 20 degrees warmer in the east side for most locations. Clayton, 29 degrees more mild this morning. And Santa Fe, we are up 8 degrees. So temperatures almost widespread in the 20s and the 30s for us. Clayton, you're actually in the 40s. It's 42 degrees for you, but we do have some teens, some single digits. Raton, Taos, Grants, and Gallup all sitting about 18 to 19 degrees. And Alamosa, we are in the single digits. A little chilly for you, but temperatures over the afternoon, not too bad. We're going to see the 50s again with high clouds, but some changes headed our way. I'll have more details on that coming up. And APS officials say school will resume today at Manzano Mesa Elementary, but security will be tight there, all because of reports of a possible active shooter in the area yesterday. Police called off the search for the alleged gunman, but the investigation is not over just yet. It all began yesterday around 3 in the afternoon. That's when APD says multiple people claim they saw a man dressed all in black, carrying a handgun and a rifle near Manzano Mesa Elementary, off of Eubank and Southern. Employees at the MCOR building called 911, saying a man was pointing a gun at the building. Some of those callers reported they heard gunshots being fired. We had a rapid response team respond to MCOR. By the time they got there, he was no longer there. Police did not find any bullet holes or shell casings. Around 6 p.m., parents were finally allowed to head to Manzano Mesa and sign their kids out of school. Police say they want to talk to the man to figure out what exactly happened, but at this point, there is not an active search for him, and they're not sure he actually committed a crime. APD says some of the SWAT team members that were at the MCOR building were also at the scene of the deadly shooting four years ago, where three people were killed. The APD officer involved in a controversial officer involved shooting is off the force this morning, becoming the third officer fired under Chief Gordon Eden. Jeremy Deere has been on desk duty since April after he shot and killed suspected car thief Mary Hawks. Deere says the 19 year old Hawks pulled a gun on him, but there is no lapel video of the incident. He claims his camera malfunctioned. APD says since last year, Deere was under strict orders to record every single arrest. News 13 learned he was accused of using excessive force three times during arrest, but all of those encounters were never recorded either. Deere's attorney says his client is a scapegoat and he is appealing this firing. The center of this matter is APD's ever-changing policy of officers using their lapel cameras, a policy that is evolving and by the city's own admission has been outsourced for review and revision. Now, Chief Eden released a statement about the termination saying, quote, I considered the seriousness of the acts and omissions, aggravating circumstances, and Officer Deer's disciplinary record. Lapel cams are part of a $263 million package President Obama is proposing to assist the nation's police departments. It's all in the wake of the unrest from the Ferguson, Missouri police shooting. I'm going to be proposing some new community policing initiatives. Uh, that will significantly expand funding and training for local law enforcement, including up to 50,000 additional body-worn cameras for law enforcement agencies. Well, the president also plans to issue an executive order to create a task force to look into policing in the 21st century. Meanwhile, Attorney General Eric Colder says the Justice Department will announce plans aimed at ending racial profiling. The management of St. Louis Rams says players will not be disciplined for their protests over the shooting death of unarmed 18-year-old Michael Brown and the decision not to indict former officer Darren Wilson. Five players emerged for Sunday's game with their hands up, a gesture that has become familiar in the Ferguson protests. A 13-year-old student now has drug possession on his school record, and it's all because he was crushing and snorting Smarties candy. 
His mother, Kelly Cook, says it's unfair and she's hiring an attorney. She says the Clovis School District took the incident way too far and that her son, Andrew, did not do what the school claims. He explained that there was no inhaling or um, snorting of any kind, that they were crushing it up and blowing smoke out at each other. Now, Andrew was suspended for 12 days last month, awaiting a fact-finding hearing. During that hearing last week, the district told Cook Andrew violated the school's drug and alcohol policy, and the incident would go on his record. The superintendent said the school decides each punishment on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, listen up, parents. As you're doing your holiday shopping this year, keep in mind just because it's on the shelf doesn't necessarily mean it's safe. That's why a local research group is putting together a list of the toys that did not make the cut when it comes to safety. The report is set to be released later today. But first, News 13's Catherine Azone has a few tips on how you can use them right now. Catherine? Good morning, Crystal. Now, whether you're shopping online or in the store, there are steps you can take to ensure you're buying toys that won't harm your child. Now, even though all toys are not labeled properly, it's still important to check the toys label before you buy it to make sure it's age appropriate. Now, experts also recommend you throw away all packaging after your child opens a toy. Kids can suffocate on plastic or choke on styrofoam peanuts. You can usually tell if a toy is too loud for your tot just by listening to it yourself. If it sounds too loud, it probably is. Keep long cords out of reach, ribbons or strings attached to Toys should be no longer than 12 inches. Now, New Mexico Public Interest Research Group campaign organizer Jacob Peter says there's an easy check to test for choking hazards. You can actually use a toilet paper tube, which we all have in our house. It's a little bit larger uh, than the choking tube that people use to test toys, but we find that it's a good uh, household item to use. And if toys fit all the way through that toilet paper tube, then they're really not safe for infants. Now, Peters also says there are stores that go above and beyond to test toys before they put them out on the shelf. He says you can check to see if the spot you plan to shop tests their toys by checking out their corporate policy. Some of the stores that do their own testing include Toys R Us and Target. Crystal, back to you. All right, thanks for that information, Catherine. Now, tune in later today right here on News 13 for the Perg's findings on unsafe toys this year. Lawmakers in Santa Fe will have a lot to tackle come January. The Democratic-led New Mexico Senate has a backlog of pending confirmation decisions on first-term appointees by Governor Susana Martinez. She's a Republican. The governor's office says the total is 85. The positions range from state boards and commissions and three cabinet secretaries. This morning, police are still looking for this man captured on surveillance cameras from a mobile home park near Eubank and Southern. Yesterday, authorities spent hours looking for him after witnesses told police they saw him wearing body armor, carrying two guns and shooting outside an elementary school and some local businesses in that area. Now, police called off the search late last night, but they're continuing to investigate this morning. Police say workers at the MCOR building, the site of a deadly shooting four years ago, called 911 saying a man was pointing a gun at the building. Some of those callers said they even heard gunshots, but police could not find any bullet holes or shell casings. They're still trying to find this guy, but they're not sure if he even committed a crime just yet. Walking down the street with a gun in the state of New Mexico is, is not necessarily a crime in itself. Uh, shooting your weapon, and it, where it's, whether it's in the air or not, is. So we're going to try to determine all of that. Manzano Mesa Elementary School also went into lockdown as calls came in about that man pointing his gun at the school from a nearby field. Finally, around 6 p.m., parents were allowed to pick up their kids. Just praying constantly that they don't come around this school. After hours of searching from the air and on the ground, police called off that search, saying they exhausted all leads and were not convinced any shots were fired. They say they want to talk to the man, though, to figure out exactly what happened, what he was doing there. But at this point, there is not an active search for him. APS says there will be school this morning at Manzano Mesa Elementary. As for concerned parents, school administrators assure them that there will be extra security on hand. And yesterday's scare definitely reignited old memories for some workers at MCOR. It was just four and a half years ago when Robert Reza walked into the building shooting and killing two people before turning the gun on himself. Four others were injured in the July 2010 rampage, including Reza's ex-girlfriend. Police think she was the intended target because the two were in the midst of a bitter custody battle. 
Yesterday, police told us MCOR put an emergency plan in place after that attack and activated it right away. We're learning more this morning about the man accused in a bizarre murder over the weekend. We now know he works for the city of Albuquerque, but not for long. The city says it is in the process of firing Byron Hayes, a city fleet service worker. Now, Hayes first told police he accidentally shot a woman, killing her, then left her in a car for hours because he panicked. Police say Hayes kept changing a story, though, about how she was shot, even saying she had accidentally shot herself. Hayes faced a judge yesterday, setting his bond at half a million dollars. Police tell us a woman who was killed by Hayes was named Nicole Adams. Family and friends gathered in her honor to hold a candlelight vigil at her apartment complex where she lived. That vigil was last night. They tell us they have no idea how she knew Hayes. She grew up in Shiprock where she played basketball in high school and leaves behind a son. The family plans to hold funeral services in Shiprock. A warning for parents of small children or anyone shopping for kids this holiday season. Experts say just because you see a toy on the shelf or for sale online, doesn't mean that it's safe. News 13's Catherine Mazone is in the Newsplex with what she's learned. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Crystal. Representatives with New Mexico Public Interest Research Group say not all toys are tested for safety. It's why the group does their own tests every year to put together a shopping guide for parents. That guide comes out today. Uh, we go into dollar stores, we go into big chain retailers such as Walmart or Kmart, and we go online and we find toys that are either mislabeled for young children that shouldn't be, uh, that contain over the allowable limits of chemicals like lead or phthalates, um, and that are noise hazards or contain powerful magnets. So they really can be found anywhere. Jacob Peters is a campaign organizer with PERG. This is footage of some of the toys on last year's list. Peter says they evaluate toys on several factors. For choking hazards, they use a test tube to see if a small child can get the toy down his or her throat. Testing for chemical toxicity is a bit tougher. They have to send the toys off to a lab to check for chemicals like lead and phthalates, which are used to soften plastic. The group also tests for powerful magnets and checks to see whether toys are too loud. Peter says the Consumer Product Safety Commission is in charge of monitoring and regulating toys that end up on store shelves, but he says they just don't have the resources to test every one. Now, Peter says this year they found some toys with more than 200 times the allowable limit of toxic chemicals. Surprisingly enough, though, those toys are still on the shelves. Crystal, back to you. Wow, that's pretty scary. Thanks for the information, Catherine. Now, coming up in our next half hour, we'll give you some tips as to how you can do a little toy testing of your own. And later today, tune in to see the toys that made Perg's naughty list this year. I love this next story. A Santa Fe Salon is teaming up to help those fighting cancer take back their self-esteem. The Salon, When the Sun Reaches My Sister, has teamed up with the New Mexico Cancer Foundation to offer women fighting cancer free services. Everything from help with hair to wigs to even makeup as the women go through chemotherapy. It's not just the pit anymore. UNM's basketball home is getting a brand new name. The school announced yesterday local pizza startup Wise Pies is paying five million bucks over the next 10 years. Also, the pit will now be named Wise Pies Arena. It's a deal UNM has been trying to swing ever since the university splurged over a $60 million renovation on the pit. The journey to find the right partner for naming the pit has taken time and careful deliberation, but it's resulted in a big win for UNM and for New Mexico. Now, Wise Pies has not even been in business a year, but has plans to expand across the Southwest next year and nationally in the future. Although the signs are up outside and inside the pit already, getting used to the new name won't happen overnight. The pit has been named the pit ever since it opened back in 1966. And all morning, we have been hearing what you had to say about this new name change. Michael P. says the name was going to get sold anyway. Wise Pies Arena has my support. Thanks for keeping it local and supporting UNM Athletics. Samantha R. says us Burqueños should support our locals. Well, Pat M. says, how about this? WP Arena. To the money, it is Wise Pies. But to the people who matter, it is Wolf Pit. This morning, a warning to active duty servicemen and women that ISIS extremists could be watching them on social media. The FBI says the extremists are looking for like-minded individuals on U.S. soil willing to carry out attacks. 
A new bulletin from the FBI in the Department of Homeland Security says the Islamic State group has publicly encouraged attacks against law enforcement and military service members. Now feds are urging current and former members of the military to review their social media accounts and avoid posts that might attract attention from the group or its supporters. So is Hollywood under attack by North Korea? The studio is raising some questions of a possible retaliation by North Korea for what the country calls an act of war, referring to the studio's upcoming film, The Interview, in which two journalists tried to assassinate North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. At least five Sony Pictures movies have been leaked online so far.